Welcome back. Let's go into strings in detail. Strings are used for text data. And if you remember, when we did a print line statement, we put in a string. You could tell because IntelliJ puts it in green and it has double quotes. So make sure to connect the dots. Strings in Java have a bunch of built-in functionalities like to uppercase, I'm sure you can guess what this does, to lowercase, length that tells you how many characters are in the string, contains, which tells you does this string contain another string, and a whole lot more. This is where you ask ChatGPT and say, hey, I want to do this thing with a string. Is there already a built-in method for it? So let's look through those examples we just went through. I'm just going to print out the string, peaches, programming. But at the end, I can use the dot operator. When you use the dot operator, or a period, this is telling Java, hey, I want to call a function, or Java calls them methods. So at the end of the string, I type dot, and you can see I get this drop-down list. This gives me all of the options I have with a string. I then click the down arrow key, and I can scroll between them. Of course, your mouse works too. I'm going to use to uppercase. And when I print this, of course, it prints it in all uppercase. I'm going to go ahead and create a new line just by copying this one. So I'm going to hit Command D or Control D if you're on Windows. And I'm going to replace this to uppercase with to lowercase. I'm then going to hit Command D again to copy the line. This time I'm going to do dot length. I'm going to copy it again, and this time I'm going to do dot contains. And then I need to give it another string. We're asking, is this string, is this string contained within this one? The answer is yes, so I should get a Boolean that says true. When I run this, you can see uppercase, lowercase, the length of the string, and true. One more thing you should notice is that when you do the dot operator, look over here on the right. What do you see? You have string, int, Boolean, string. What this is telling you is at the end of doing this function, what do you get back? When you do length, what do you get back? You get back an integer. How many characters are in the string? This is your return type of the method. We're going to talk about this more in the future, but start noticing it now. Contains, for example, returns a Boolean, either a true or a false. To lowercase returns a string. It's still a string, it's just a different string. You can do the same thing in a different way. So if I say string name is equal to whatever you want, I can then print name so this is the variable name I gave it. And if I call the dot operator here, I can do the exact same thing. So I'm going to say to lowercase, and it works exactly how you would expect it. However, this is a very important point. If I print out name again, so look what we just did. We said name is equal to this. Then we said name to lowercase. What is this going to print out? Is it going to print out the name, or is it going to print out the name to lowercase? Well, you can see it printed out the original name. That's because we didn't save the value. All this did was convert this name to lowercase, print it out, but it never went and changed name. So if I want to change name, what I would have to do is say name is equal to name dot to lowercase. And now if I print it out, it actually is saved. So this is called reassignment. We did this in the previous video, but this is really important. It doesn't save it unless you use this equal sign. The equal sign is the assignment operator. 
So if you want to save it, make sure you use this. Okay, next up, you can think of a string as a list of characters, or an array of characters. We'll talk about arrays in the future, but for now, look at the string. You have hello, and each character has an index. So the H is the first one, and it's at index 0. Computers start counting at 0, so the first index is the 0th index. And the second letter is at index 1, etc. This is important to know to understand the next set of built-in functions. So here's a couple more. Char at, you can pass in an index, say index 0, and it will tell you which character is at that index. You can do a substring, meaning chop the string into smaller bits, or you could even do replace, like capital P replaced with a lowercase p. Of course, there's a lot more. We're just covering a couple. So if I print out name, and I call the dot operator, and I can say char at, and you can see I have to give it an index. So I'm going to pass in index 1. And remember, it starts counting at 0. So this is 0. We should get a lowercase e. And there we have it. Next, I'm going to call substring. And we have a couple options, but we're going to use this first one. And it tells you you have to give it a beginning index and an ending index. So my beginning index is going to be 2, and my ending index will be 5. So you can see it printed out these three letters. It started at index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and it did not include 5. That's because this second one is non-inclusive. So you would have to look up the documentation to know exactly if it includes that letter or if it's right before. Another thing you can do here is you can say name dot length, and that prints it all the way to the end of the string. This is really useful because what if your string changes? It will dynamically go to the end every single time. It's little things like this that are really going to bump up your programming to the next level. And lastly, I'm going to call name dot, and I'm going to replace all of the capital P's with a lowercase p. And you can see, now the two p's are in lowercase. Next up is the string operator. Strings can use the plus operator. So here's an example. Let's say you have a first name and a last name string. You can concatenate these together and say first name plus last name, and Java will jam them together. This is known as concatenation. Or you can do the exact same thing, but use a function called dot .concat. So let's try it out. I'm going to have a string, first name. Make sure to put it in camel case. A string, last name, is equal to And then I'm going to print out first name, and I'm going to use the plus operator, and then last name. When I run this, I get exactly what I'm expecting. Notice it does not give you a space. You have to include that yourself. So here's how you could do it. Add in another plus operator, and in between, put in double quotes and a space. You can do the exact same thing but instead use concat. This works the same way, but instead calls an explicit method. Notice, when you look at concat, you have to pass in a string, that's what we give it, and then it returns another string. What this means is we can call concat a couple of times. So if I do concat with a space, I can then call concat again, with last name to get the exact same result. Okay, warning, this is where things get weird. This is probably the first thing you might not understand on your first try. So strings can be null or they can be empty. A null string literally says null. An empty string has both double quotes 
but nothing in it. The best analogy I can give for this is think of a box. A string is like a box, and then inside the box is a value. That's the actual string. A null string has no box. You didn't even get a box. An empty string, you got the box, but there's nothing in it. On a more technical note, a null string means that there is a null pointer, meaning there is no pointer to anything in memory. So you have a null string in memory, but it points to nothing. An empty string has a pointer to something in memory, but after you successfully look it up, there's nothing there. So you have an empty string, it does have a memory address, you go over to the memory address, but there's nothing there. And here's another example from Stack Overflow of trying to explain the difference between empty string and null. Empty string means the string is just length zero. Null means it's not even there. And FYI, this is really just an introduction to get us started. There will be more things to learn with strings. And now it's time for you to do your homework. Good luck.